your hope. His vision. What would Dr. King say? Would he address the antagonistic bickering and grotesque tendencies to perpetuate our ecological demise? Hmm, that sounds pretty good. In fact, I decided to use the fanciest words I could find in the dictionary to answer these questions so I could sound more like Dr. King himself. But instead, I just decided to use my everyday words because Dr. King was more concerned about being clear than getting applause. Dr. King will want us to have hope, and he would likely tell us we can find it. And by being courageous, being a voice, and learning to compromise. Now, courageous doesn't mean being fearless. It means being brave, even when you're afraid. It helps a person overcome their fears and gives them a chance to hope for the best. When I was six, Super Kyle, my Labrador Golden Retriever, got stuck in a very crowded closet. I climbed through the air vent and lowered myself with a rope tied around my waist because that was the only way to get him out. His life depended on mine. Dr. King would want us to imagine what we could believe and achieve if we all thought about each other that way. He would say, use your courage and make changes in the world that other people can see because our lives do depend on each other. That will give us something to hope for. Now, speaking of hope, I hope all of you here never see me cry. But you might, like when I don't get the last warm chocolate chip cookie that my mother bakes, or having to choose between seeing Beyonce, or Justin Bieber, or well, I think you get the point. But I did cry when I learned about Addie, Denise, Carol, and Cynthia, the four colored girls that burned in Birmingham in 1963. Not only because their tiny bodies exploded, but because they wanted to give someone else hope by participating in the Freedom March. Now, Dr. King even wired President Kennedy about what happened from Atlanta. Dr. King would say, now it is your turn. Go out and be a voice, like the four colored girls, like Dr. King. That is why I am here today, to be a voice and to tell what Dr. King will want today. We do need to be we do need courage that will change our lives and others. We do need to be a voice when others are afraid to speak. But most importantly, we also need to learn how to compromise. Now, about a year ago, when I was in third grade, I had a little get together at my house. One of my friends got so upset with me that she wrote loser outside of my house with a big piece of chalk. We resolved it later but it really hurt my feelings. You know what I thought? Life is too short to be fighting all the time. From his letters, interviews, and speeches, what I think Dr. King would want most is for all of us to get along. But I think that he also realized that some people may not. Dr. King would say, what I am convinced Dr. King would say is, what a world, wait, what an amazing world we can live in if we all treated each other peacefully. Raise your hand if you've been to the Martin Luther King Monument in Washington, D.C. Mm. Well, I have. It is located west of the Potomac River. It is America's 39th monument of the National State Park System. Its official address is 1964. Southwest commemorates that the year of 1964, civil rights became law. I think Dr. King would be amazed, but I want you to do something even more amazing for Dr. King. When you lead this competition, put on a badge of courage and make changes in the world that other people can see. Be a voice for those people who cannot find the right words to speak and make peace with those who are hard to get along with. Huh, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> not only because this is a competition, not only because it's his birthday, but because we hold his love and hope deeply within our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my vision. Let us work together to make it all come true. Thank you.